Hey everybody, it's Angie here and this is my very first tad along. So welcome and I hope that you have a great time. I first of course have to say thank you to the designer Gina Butler. She designed this piece um, 2006 according to the pattern I have here. Um, and she has her own YouTube channel that she walked through this on. So I will link to that uh, below in the video as well. You can see from her own perspective what she says. And of course, give her a look. Um, I have uh, many things that I want to talk about. So, so the very first thing I wanted to do in this video, and I have my little notes so I can stay focused, is... Um, getting started, reading the diagram, reading the pattern, basic rings and chains, that sort of thing. Um, so to begin, in each of these videos, in each of these, um, in each section, you're going to need basic, your basic tatting kit. Same thing every time. So I have a little, let's go down and check it out. And please let me know what uh, what's what with the mic. You can see I moved it closer and I turned it up. It's it's gain is, let's see if that's, that's all the way up. Okay, so it's all the way up. Plus I've done some in the settings to change it. So please let me know if it's better. So make sure we're not frozen. Okay, we're not frozen. So this is your basic tatting kit. And this is what you'll need pretty much through every step of this process. The only thing that will differ is when we get to the tail, instead of a ball thread, you're going to need a second shuttle. Now, a lot of times this is um, geared for newbie, newbie, newbies. So if you already know this information, that is fabulous. Feel free to fast forward. But what I'm gonna talk about right, just, right now for just a few seconds, is this whole idea of working off the ball versus working with a second shuttle. If this were the purple thread that I had wound this shuttle on, I could keep winding for this shuttle, leave it attached to this ball, if this was the purple ball, and call it working off the ball. This is continuous thread method because there's no there's no beginning, there's no knot in between where the shuttle starts and the ball stops. There's no, there's no tying in part, there's no beginning. You would just pick a spot, make your, sit up for your hand for a, a ring and just off to the races you would go. I'm going to be working off the ball and I call it, we say off the ball, when there's no other shuttle, when the ball is the second shuttle. So, you can do this as long as your pattern is fairly simple, rings and chains. If it has a thrown off ring, also called a floating ring, also called a ring off a chain, because we're tatters, we have to name things the same name at least three times. <laughs> it's a rule. The only rule we have in tatting must name it multiple things, multiple times the same technique. So. We call it working off the ball when we're literally working from the ball, the thread is coming from the ball and there's no shuttle on the ball thread. We call it the ball thread. So this is what I'm going to be working on because I want you to see clearly the what will be the ring color and the chain color, that it will be clearly two separate colors. If you are just starting out and that confuses you or you just think that that's just too much to start out with just do one color it'll be fine um, just make sure that you don't cut it from the ball once you're done the only problem that you will have if you do that on a regular basis is if you don't have another ball of the same color and you run out on your shuttle you're gonna have to cut so that you can rewind your shuttle and then you're going to have to tie in because there's no way unless you use it from like the opposite side or something to um to wind your shuttle 
if you're using the ball thread. Make sense? I hope so. If not, shoot me a question on my Facebook page, which I will be linked below, or um, I mean, I suppose you could email me. My email is listed on the YouTube channel as well. But Facebook is going to be, I think, think, the easiest way on my Facebook page to get in contact. Now, to start out at the very, very beginning, if you're a very newbie, newbie noob, you can tie your two colors together. It doesn't hurt anything. You're just starting out. You're just learning. Just tie them in a regular old knot. Any knot you like, you can do the old overhand, you know, put them together, tie them to get, you know, like this, tie them in a knot, whichever you like, just to get you started. Otherwise, there, I do have a video called Tanning Over Tails, which I will link up there somewhere um, that will show you kind of how to start out if you wanted to do that. So let's take a quick look because this is what you want. So there's your kit. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need a shuttle wound up. You're going to need a ball or a second shuttle. You're going to need a crochet hook and a pair of scissors. That's your basic tatting kit. You probably need that for every pattern you'll ever do in your life. That's your basic kit. That's what you're going to need for this time. This is a very simple beginner pattern. Um, Gina has done some lovely work um, to get us started. So let's take a look under. Ah. Okay. As you can see, it's a cross pattern. This is what we're going to be doing. And I just wanted to show you quickly. Let's get the ball thread out of the way, if you please. Thank you. Um, just the difference in size. This is the exact same pattern, worked exactly the same in different size threads. So this is, a, I do believe, a size 5. Maybe I lied. Maybe that's a size 10. I think that might be a size 10. Those are both size 10s, but you can see one is a little floofier than the other. This is a size 20. So you can see, let me put it on the darker one. So that's a size 20. This is a size 40. So you can, whoop, come on now. So you can see the difference. I didn't realize I did them so close in color. That's kind of funny. Uh, you can see the difference in the different sizes and they are exactly tatted exactly the same per the pattern instructions. So it does matter what size you, the smaller, the thinner the thread, the, the smaller the thread, the smaller the motif. Now the designer, Gina, has designed the chain to be a spiral chain. I'm going to hold that up. That's the best I could do for a spiral chain. That short little bit right there is a spiral chain and we will be learning it when we get to the tail part. But I told her I was going to incorporate a lot of different learning techniques into the chain. One of my favorites Let's see where you can see it the best. One of my favorites is a lock chain. This is a lock chain. It's extremely simple. You'll be amazed when we get to it. It's very simple, but how cool does that look? It looks like really something complicated, but I promise you, you can get it in 20 seconds or less. It is super simple and it looks really, really cool. So we're going to be incorporating uh, a lot of different techniques into the tail so that we can learn. Um, so here's one I kind of did as an example and just messed the whole thing up. But this was kind of, you'll get the idea. So I started with a lock chain for just a few stitches. I did a Clooney, a horrible Clooney, bad, bad Clooney. Went back to a lock chain. Tried to save it. <laughs> Tried another Clooney. Yikes. Um, I think some more lock chain. Attempted, you can sort of almost see a spiral there. Tried to do a spiral. 
tried to do some more spiral. It got a little better. Just the tiniest bit better. You did. It does spiral. And went back to the trusty lock chain. <laughs> so there you go. There was my attempt. This is in size 20. So it is um, quite a bit smaller. So you can't see from far away other than the Clooney's that there's much of a difference in anything that I did. But it's fun. So we're going to be le learning... Uh, we're going to do lock chain. We're going to touch briefly on Clooney's because I have another video on Clooney's already we've we've done actually called tallies. Um, I don't know much about them, but uh, New Bear has an awesome video. I do not have her permission to show it or anything, but um, New Bear, look on hers for, for Clooney. Um, Clooney help and Muskin. If you just go to her tips around the, the house blog spot, I will link to that. I do have her permission to show hers. Um, go to hers and just type in Clooney's. I'll try to link to it directly. Um, I'm going to have a lot of links, so make sure you check them all out. They're extremely helpful and necessary. So check them out. Um, do some homework, have some fun. And of course, you're going to need Miss Gina's um, pattern. And this is going to be, oh my, shiny. Okay, this is going to, okay, well, let's just do this. Take it out of its cover. There you go. This is Miss Gina's uh, pattern that we're going to be working. It is a beginner pattern. She's written it out for you, how the row, how the rings go, how the chains, the corners, giving you a little drawing. So you've got a diagram, you've got words, and you've got a whole diagram of the whole thing all together. And the cool thing that she did, which I think is really ingenious, is as you tat, she's laid how you would turn it so that the numbers face you in the correct way that you would be tatting it up and turning as you would go in your progression. I also have the help of my guy, Ringhead Joe. So we are going to be definitely getting out Ringhead Joe and walking through this pattern as if you know, we're tatting it because we need to understand our line of progression and how we're doing this and how it's coming along. In, in real life, this is the kind of helps that I would use. Okay, so I just kind of walked through that and with my finger as I was talking. But this is kind of the help. This is like real life what I would use if I got this pattern and I was like, oh my word, how do I even do this? How, how can I figure this out? Um, come here, ringhead. Okay. I would get my guy ringhead and she has her number one facing me. So that's just like this ringhead guy. Let's get ringhead out too, because he's going to be shiny because why not? And let's see if I can do this all on the same camera shot. Wish me luck, everyone. Okay. So this let me move some things. All right. Sorry if I bumped the mic there. Ring head is up facing me. Ring head, just like number one. So you would start like this. Then you would make this 12 double stitch chain. Okay. So arm up. He's up, facing up. Here's his head, facing up. Arm up reverse work. So that would tell me right there, okay, I'm going to reverse work. Now I turn him, turn my pattern. There's ring head. And if I didn't turn my pattern, I would turn my ring head and there's ring head. Okay. There's his, there he's up. His head is up here. His little pretend picos, <laughs> his little pico hair is up Two. his arms are up, arms are up, reverse work. 
So as you can see, they all sort of look the same. So guess what? We're going to be reversing work. Now, if you glance at this pattern, which you should always kind of walk through the pattern before you pick up your tatting things. A lot of us just want to jump in and grab that yarn, grab that thread and start to tat. And I totally get it. And I totally understand. And I am with you in your earnestness. But we need to look at this pattern and see if there's anything that we don't understand or we're not sure about. And right down here, she has all of the where you join. And so you have to pay attention because this first join right here, this is not joined with this one. These are open. The rest are kind of joined together. So we, we need to make a mental note of that. And then this little section right here, 8, 9, 10, 16, 17, 18, 24, 25, 26, 32, 33, 34. These are all clovers. So if we go to our ring head Joe help, clovers, you do not reverse work. You make your, let's see if I can do this. Let's help me out here. Help me out, Lord. Okay. So if I had my clover and we're going to just looking at eight, nine, 10. Okay. Now look at ring head. Eight, nine, 10. We're going to not reverse work, not reverse work, not reverse work. We might have to turn him a little bit, but this is all do not reverse work. D and R, do not reverse. D in R W, do not reverse work. We're going to not reverse work 8, 9, 10. And then we're going to pick up that chain again. And you'll see once we start tatting it, they're not, there's not going to be a chain coming off a of nine, just like this. This is, this is nine. There's not a chain coming off here. There's, there's a chain coming off here and there's a chain coming off here. And this will again be right down here, reverse work. Once we get to it. And you can see clearly, it does not look like this one where the arms are down. Do not reverse work. The arms are up. So we're going to be reversing work. So this is how you can use all of these people that are smarter than me. You can use the help of people like Gloria from Sparkling Light Creation Studio and Miss Gina who wrote this pattern specifically turned so that you could turn the numbers to face you as you're working around this thing to see. And you can use these helps to tat up your work. This is exactly how I do this quote unquote in real life. These are the helps and this is why I love Ringhead Joe. And this is why I love people like Gina who make it easier for us noobs to figure things out a little bit easier. So this is the pattern. All of the rings. All you have to remember the number three, the number six, and the number 12. That's it. This whole pattern should be fairly uh, easy if you can just remember those three numbers. So all of the rings have three double stitches in between all the picos, and there are three picos on each ring. Some of them join. This one joins obviously to three rings right here. This one joins to four rings up here. So we know that those need to be a little bigger than the ones that are real close to each other. These can be a little smaller. And you can see on mine, sometimes I followed that rule pretty close and sometimes I didn't. So let me just say that there are mistakes in here. In each one of these, I, I can probably guarantee you that I made a mistake somewhere along the line, but I challenge you to find it. And if you can't see it, it doesn't count. The cross that Christ hung on wasn't perfect either, but the man who hung on it was. And that's the important part to remember when we're tatting up crosses. So 
these will all join in the center like that's a pretty good join i did that one pretty well i think of my critiqued work that one's a little sloppy that one up this one over in the corner to me that's a little sloppy this one's a little sloppy and i will say too i had a little trouble starting my pattern would lean a bit if I started at one because I was tatting my chain too tight and it would pull it wonky and then when I attached it I was kind of over too far and I kept twisting these so what I did and you can do too is you can start and start of starting with number one here let me get my pattern back so sorry oh sorry that was loud I bet pardon me okay instead of starting with one I made one where I started with two. So let me turn it like this. I started like this. Forget that. And I started with two, three, four, five, blah, 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 and went up and around and around and around and around and back down. And then when I got back down to here, after I got done with ring 40, I tatted my chain, my 12. Then I tatted ring one and connected it where necessary. So there is a little bit of give to it. Just be sure if you do that, if you start, you know, without this one, that you count appropriately. So I, when I was making these around, I was like, okay, so that's two, three, four, five, six. And I just started counting that way. So I didn't lose how many were supposed to be in the arms. So the arms ended up equal in where they were supposed to be. So just a little, if you have trouble with starting at number one you can always start at number two and just go straight up and around and around and around and around but when you get back down you're going to have a little extra going from 40 12 double stitches one 12 double stitches to finish off over there okie doke so as you can see that's where i finished off i started here at number two I don't know why that's so so dark but i started at two and that's where i ended when i came back around and i had to tat number one so if you have trouble that's an option for you just make sure you keep with your numbers so you've got your kit you've got your tatting supplies you you're ready to go this video will assume that you know how to make a double stitch and we will go basically over um We'll go over the rest. We're, we're not going to go over how to make a double stitch, but we're going to go through the pattern. I have it set up. So I think there will be four, maybe five videos, but um, I'm going to try to get it in four. And we're going to talk about um, today what we did. We're, we're getting started. We're talking about reading the how to read the pattern, how to read the diagram, um, tatting in different size thread. The only thing I didn't talk about was if you lay your tatting down, how to read it. So I can go over that really quick. I'm going to need to pause and, and tie up some things and do some things real quick. Then the second video, we're going to do the first half of the cross. Second video, second half of the cross. Or I'm sorry, third video, second half of the cross. Fourth video, the tail and all its variety. And depending on that one, that one maybe needed to be split into two. And then we're going to finish up with talking about should we block it? Should we stiffen it? Whatever. Uh, we might just touch on that just basic, basic stuff. Um, it's basically going to be up to you. Um, I don't see the need, but whatever. We can talk about how to. Uh, block and and all that sort of thing once we get there but I hope that you have a great time if there's uh, anything that I need to do differently or any questions that you have please give me a shout on the Facebook uh, page I do check that pretty regularly and I get notified if if I don't that there's something there that somebody commented and also below the video if you make a comment I definitely do respond there as well so grab your tatting supplies and I will meet you back here same time a uh, week from today so it will I'm hoping to let these videos drop on Monday usually I drop them around 10 a.m. so Monday morning at 10 a.m. will the new one will be out and you can tat along with me 
Uh, you can watch these, of course, anytime. They're not live, so we, we don't have to worry about all meeting at the same time and same channel. Maybe if we do this again, maybe I can do a live one, and, and that would be great fun because then you could respond right in the moment and ask me a question if you had one. And if you don't and you just absolutely hate this and I'm doing a horrible job, I need to know that too because I'm, I'm here to help you learn, and if you're not learning, then I need to know uh, what to do differently. So, And also, please let me know. I got my little microphone in, she pretty, and she's she lights up and then I can turn her off. Isn't she cute? She just turns, and so it's very clear to see when she's not on. So uh, please let me know though if it has made a difference, um, if it's loud enough, if it's too loud, uh, what whatever the case may be. So thank you so much. Grab your supplies, get a copy of the Oh, that's very bright. There you go. Get a copy of the pattern and get ready. And I will meet you back here next week. Um, of course, you can work ahead and try to tat it up and, and do it on your own. Absolutely. That's the whole name of the game. So if you, if you do that, that's great. So let me pause really quick and um, grab some thread so I can show you one last thing for today. And then we're going to call it and I will see you next week. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Let's go down. Okay. Oh, let's move some of this. I'm sorry. So you can see it. Gets off of there. Okay. I've just tatted one, two, three. And I just wanted to briefly uh, touch on what happens if, you know, you get busy, the phone rings, whatever, you lay that down, you forget about it, and then you pick it back up. Other than looking and tracing your steps and going, okay, well, I have three rings, so one, two, three, which, where am I? Uh, which is always a good way, always refer to your patterns. That's always a good way to figure out where you are. But how can you tell from looking at it what you did, wh what's happening? Well, you go to your last thread, whichever one's on top. So that one came, okay, so I did, a, I did a ring last. And even if it's upside down, okay, then I did that that chain, but that chain stops there. So I had to do that ring next. So it was like that. So I did a ring. So there's my thread coming off. So if I were to pick this up, if I were to do it like this, the ring, what I'm going to call the ring thread, shuttle one, would be on top and you're actually set up, if you keep it like this, to do another ring. But you know because of your pattern that it's ring, chain, ring, chain, ring, chain. So you know that you need to reverse work from your ring. So you reverse work and now look at your thread which one is on top the blue one so whenever you lay your work down it doesn't matter which direction it's laid or how you can pick it up and by looking at it this is what i call reading your tatting you can pick it up and figure out what element you did last which will help you figure out where you are in your pattern and then what element comes next by what thread is on top. So if we were in the clover part, let's say this was, you know, ring, let's see, where am I at? Um, eight, let's say this was ring eight, then I was ready to set up for the clover, which is another ring. So I know that I'm in this way, this thread is ready to go. This thread is on top, because look, if I grab this one and try to make this a ring, See how it doesn't set up correctly for a ring, but this one does with this one staying out of the way. See, then I know that, okay, I'm ready. And then I could set up for a ring and make my clover if I was at that part in the pattern. So that's just a little tip on how to read your, your tatting. If you set it down, look at which one is on top and hold it the different directions, hold it, you know, as if you just completed a chain and then, okay, well, if I just completed that chain, then this ring wouldn't be here because this one would be on top and this one would be ready to go. See how these, 
these threads, the blue is on top. The blue is set to go again. It's blue's turn. If you just did ring and chain, reverse work, ring and chain, ring and chain. So that's a good way to read your tatting and kind of understand which is coming next um, in your pattern and how to how to figure it out and how to read your pattern, how to read your tatting. I will say it is a very good idea. I know in crochet and knitting, you can just pretty much stop wherever, pull out a big length of, of your yarn and just sort of leave it, you know, hung out even in the middle of the row or whatever. In tatting, you want to finish an element. You want to finish a ring and close it. You want to finish a ring, I'm sorry, a chain and snug it before you set your tatting down. That's kind of the only, the rule, I guess, hard and fast rule, because you don't want to leave a ring open. It's too hard. It's too fiddly. It's too floppy to try to figure out where you are. So you need to finish an element before you set it down. And um, that's how to, when you pick it back up, figure out which direction and where kind of you are. As you read your tatting by looking at the, the string, the thread that's on top ready to go, which one, if I set it up, is going to make the most sense and if i set this one this one's ready to go but this is my chain color so if i set it up for a ring there's going to be a ring sitting at the bottom of this ring so that's kind of a just kind of a newbie 101 you know trying to read your tatting and figure out what's what um i'm not extremely good at it but i'm getting better and this whole thing, I, my channel is basically a newbie. <laughs> I, I'm, I've been tatting for a little bit. You can learn along with me is pretty much what it amounts to. And we can learn together. And I think that that's great. Because um, I think that if you stop learning, what's the point? What's the point of, of going on, honestly? Because you should learn every day of your life. And if I can learn with you, so much the better. I think that that's just cool and fun. So I hope that you've enjoyed this rather long intro. I apologize. I'm going to try to cut it down in post-production here. But I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you stick with it and you come back next week and get the next part. Do go to her website. I will put the link down below in the video description box. Go to her website. Get a copy of the basic ring chain cross bookmark pattern and have that ready for next week. And all you will need is the pattern and your basic tatting kit, which will be a ball of thread, a wound shuttle, a pair of scissors, and a crochet hook. And always remember, you are the master of the thread. You have opposable thumbs and scissors. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.